Do you play FPL um, fantasy league? No, 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 no. I, I, uh, man, I just can't keep up with that. <laughs> you know, it's like I can't keep. Up. I try. I try playing like every year, yeah. but after about four weeks, like I just lose motivation. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It's been losing. It's been losing too bad in your group. That's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> fire, 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 fire. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Try Factor Podcast. Um, this is episode twenty-seven. Today we have a special guest on. Um, as you enter the door, make sure and hit the like button. If you know any other participants, hit the like button. If you're a guy who does robbing your WhatsApp group about football whole day, <laughs> hit the like button, right? Um, oh, so today we, we have Mr. Frederico Pena on. We're going to ask him about his roots in Trinidad and how he transitioned to Canada right now, um, how things are going, how he developed and um, try to get some education, inspiration, and um, maybe some tips on on how guys could become pro. How does that sound, Frederico? Yeah, for sure. It sounds good, man. So, Frederico Pena, um, you're in Canada right now, right? Yes, sir. All right. So, professional footballer. Made it on the international stage for Trinidad and Tobago. Where where did you get started in Trinidad and Tobago? How 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 are you connected to Trinidad and Tobago for those who, who may not know? So I was born in Trinidad and Tobago um, in 1999. Um, you know, my family we 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 lived there. Both my parents are from Trinidad. Nice. Um, they you know I have um, we used to live in Balsane. Right. Okay. 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 Around like Bal Park area, yeah. Okay, Jam- okay. Jamboree Park. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real yeah. <laughs> <Or else> Fet. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Yeah. You know, right. so I I grew up I grew up there. You know, I, I have a lot of memories of Trinidad. Um, I played there. I played youth soccer, football there when I was uh, around six, seven. I started right. with Sky. Good right. about football. Sky, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Dexter Skeen um, was was like the head head coach there, and um, yeah, you know, and then I, I moved to Canada when I was around 11, 10, 11 years old. Okay. And, uh, been been here since. So Trinidad, you know, it's it's always uh, it's always been a big big part of of who I am, and uh, you know, I always stay close to my roots, and you know. Um, growing up, um, what were your first images of football? What made you fall in love with the game? Um, definitely. I mean, I was all. I have. Uh, I have four older brothers. Right. <laughs> so we were always, you know, talking about um, about football, and um, one was a Manchester United fan, the other was a <laughs> fan, and the, and me and my my oldest brother was were Arsenal fans. Hey, so, uh, it's a, wait, 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 it's a word. What, what no, no. I mean? Back then. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, very I good. Still right. I still am, 100%. Nice. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I first, my first kind of uh, time that I remember, like, my first real image was um, I was playing uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. I think it was, like, 2006. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. 2006, I was playing with uh, Arsenal. I was a kid that was <laughs> seven nice. years old. And I, I was playing my my brother, who uh, who was with Chelsea, and he uh, and I scored a goal at like <laughs> half uh, with Thierry Henry. And since then, and since then, I've been an Arsenal fan. And, you know, <laughs> I, I had a I had a documentary of the the Invincible season and right. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching that and, and growing up, obviously, right after that, um, pain. I have. Uh, <laughs> No, but right right around that time was uh, the the World Cup, where obviously Trinidad, you know, yeah, the yeah. World Cup, yeah. and you know, that's uh, that was a big big thing because um, I I have family ties to Shaka Hislop, nice. so okay. 
seeing him and uh you know I, at first i actually wanted to be a goalie okay uh, i actually wanted to be a goalie and uh, i eventually realized that you know i was, <laughs> I was better on outside, outside you ain't taking no bullet <laughs> yeah no no, no. But, no he's growing up in trinidad we we would just play you know we, we would sweat in in jamboree park and you know we had the bamboo goals and you know yeah it yeah, was, yeah. Um, it was that, that that was my biggest thing i was always you know i was always there with my brothers so definitely have a strong strong football memory in trinidad for sure okay okay um so yeah. growing up what what position did you play um any any what were your natural attributes um i was always a very i was always a good you know i always first of all i always worked hard and yeah. uh i, I kind of get that from my my brothers who, who pushed me a lot okay being being the youngest at the time i have another i have a younger brother but um you know worked hard worked hard for sure and you know I, i felt like i was very good at uh you know dribbling and taking guys on i was i always wanted to dribble when i was a kid and uh you know i was always I, i was always in an attacking role whether that be winger or as a striker you know always involved in attacking but as i, I went to europe and um i guess they saw that i could kind of do both where i'm like working really hard defensively and uh as well i can get forward and and provide pace down down the wing so um i started getting i started being uh, i started playing as a right back in a 3-5-2 when mm. i at uh, ghent um this was like the youth the youth team there the the under 19s um right. and that's when i kind of transitioned from attacker to defender defender <laughs> and since since coming back to canada and you know um working with my coach i've i've you know really learned a lot about the defensive side of the game and take pride in that so you know started started wanting to be a, a striker you know and then <laughs> now i'm now i'm big fans of guys like Kieran Tierney and all, all <laughs> good, good defenders you know what i mean so yeah but but do you have any attack in progress um do you go down the line with a team Yeah, I mean my I mean we we play uh my my team plays a uh, kind of keep the ball right you know, possession possession game um mm-hmm. you know as much as, as you can so um the opportunities to cross aren't that much but you know I'd say it's <laughs> it's a, a big strength of mine you know just going going down the line whipping in across um with if I'm on the left or the right you know because I I play I can play both sides So uh okay. yeah it's definitely you know definitely something that I love doing I love getting getting forward 100% but you know sometimes you got to take take into consideration that I got to get back as well so for sure just okay. picking learning learning to pick pick my moments is uh definitely something you know I've been working on so can't just keep going going at 100 miles per hour right so <laughs> so you kind of um, you kind of mentioned it quickly there that so like you you emigrated to Canada so that was like your whole family all your brothers everything yeah are you the are you the only pro out of all your bros that so I have a big family um you know I grew up I grew up in a big family I have five brothers and I have four sisters um all from the same parents you know um so big family and tons of you know it was a it was it was a loud household back in trinidad you know in canada <laughs> yeah you know it was it was really uh i have lots of good memories of that but um all of my brothers played football um right. with sky um, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. coming coming down with to uh, canada and playing here like youth teams and you know the the men's teams and whatever here yeah but um after that um you know my older brothers you know ones they're they're very uh they're very studious so you know ones a, ones a, two are lawyers one's a doctor you know nice. and then my my youngest brother who is a lot better than me especially you know going forward <laughs> uh, his name's Thomas he um he's with the 
the second team right now at the Vancouver Whitecaps. Nice. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah he, uh, he's doing really well, and um, you know, um, he's he has a lot of potential, and you know, he's learning a lot there, and, and right. he's in a good there. So uh, he's uh, definitely definitely one to look out for. Um, nice. Yeah. So so how does it work to get into the? Um, I don't want to skip too far ahead, but how does it work to get into the Canadian Premier League? Like, so it, do you get drafted and stuff? Is that some um, of those? There, yeah. There, so there's a draft. Uh, we have the U Sports draft, it's called, um, where clubs, I think it's, it's a two round draft. And, you know, clubs just, um, you know, pick the players that, that they want out of mm. the draft. And then uh, they come into preseason. The players that they pick, the college guys come into preseason and then um, they can get signed, um, you know, based based off of how they perform in preseason okay but that's one way to get in i mean i i got into the i got into the league um based off of my you know experience in europe and having worked with my with my current coach um you know it, uh, all throughout my youth youth uh youth teams in in canada yeah um you know so i i, I knew him and um you know, I was at a point in Europe where I was, you know, kind of homesick and I was young and alone and stuff. So I kind of, as, as soon as I heard there was professional, a, a professional league going on in my, in my, uh, you know, city and country, um, I kind of reached out to the, to my current head coach and, you know, we got it done and been here since. So yeah. I'm enjoying it. And, you know, we have tons of, Tons of talents from you know all over the world. My you know my team have guys like um, guys from who played in Syria in Brazil and you know guys who are just coming up like you know, young players from Peru and Panama and yeah. you know so lots of lots of different nationality mm -hmm. and a, and a good mix of uh, of talent. Oh, so so how did you uh, how did you end up in Europe? So I actually went. When I was younger, I went to Europe when I was about 15. Um, and at the time, so it's, it's kind of a long story. At the time, I, uh, I was just going over there to, you know, see how it was in Europe because that was always my kind of dream to play in Europe. And, and Were you called on a trial? Um, so, so, yeah, so I, I, I have a coach uh, here who I was working with uh, when I was younger and he, he kind of brought me to Europe um, and kind of linked me up with an agent there who sent me to different teams. And when I was younger, 14, 15. And so I trained with uh, the Anderlecht uh, youth team. They're like Academy. Right. And then after that, I, uh, this, the agents saw me there and he had uh, ties with the club KAA Ghent. Oh, yeah. yeah, we know Ghent. Yeah. So I went there, not really on a trial, but just, you know, just to get, get a taste of, of the football and the level. Yeah. Um, so I went there and, and really impressed uh, the, the, the coaches there. And um, immediately they wanted to sign me after about a week. Nice. Um, but the, the only problem was I didn't have a European citizenship. Right. So I couldn't sign and... Um, Luckily, my mom's uh, grand, my mom's dad, he, uh, so my great grandfather, yeah, um, no, yeah, my mom's dad's dad. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mom's it's grandfather. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he he came from Portugal from Madeira, um, oh. on a boat to Trinidad and and kind of immigrated there. Um, Seriously. So, yeah. This, this this story getting bigger and bigger. I don't know. Yeah. What's going on. <laughs> From a D, right? You said right. <laughs> yeah. A long time ago, he came. He came on a boat to Trinidad. We're not related to Cristiano, right? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I just had a. I just had to ask. All right, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so so he came on a boat, and you know he he stayed in Trinidad. So I have uh I have Portuguese roots as well. Wow. So somehow I was I was able to get. You know, I, I had to go through tons of hoops and and hurdles to, to get my Portuguese citizenship. All right. And uh, so eventually, like after I had to like learn the language and take an aptitude test on the language and stuff. But 
So eventually I got, I got my citizenship and at, at around 17, going on 18, right. I went back to uh, Ghent and I signed my, what? my first professional contract with them. Oh, wow. So not to cut you off, right, Federico, you had to learn Portuguese to prove you, you were, that's the like, language you had to learn Portuguese. Yeah, that, that, that's like, that's like the, that was part of their citizenship yeah, the require the requirements <laughs> yeah i had to like learn of the language to a certain like level level okay all right understood yeah and right. so then after that you know i spent about uh must be like a year and a half with ghent you know did well and um played with the uh, under 19s as well as the the second team the under 23s okay. yeah learned a lot and um you know trained with the first team multiple times and you know, so after that, after my stint with Gantz, I went to Standard Liège. Um, yeah, yeah. So there I played for a year um, with the second team. And, you know, just that's that's kind of where I kind of learned how to be a, a, a professional. And, you know, the, the game is right. tough, man. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's a, a lot of people, you know, only see the, the big players and the, yeah. And then, you know, pop the high level and the glamour and stuff. But, you know, it's, it's a, that's where I learned that it's like a tough, tough environment and, you know, a lot of competition. You have to, you know, do everything, you know, the, the, the right, you know, things every day to kind of. Yeah. It's like, like diet and, and sleep yeah, and diet, all this stuff. Yeah. Being professional and, you know, doing everything to make your game better. And, um, hmm. yeah, I, I learned a lot and eventually came back uh, to Canada and, you know, so I'm I'm here now, and so, you know, we'll so see what, what happens. Well, me and it, it was basically a jungle. <laughs> oh right? yeah, so, yeah. So, so <laughs> but, but I don't, don't, don't want to say kill or be killed, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it's <laughs> it's it's really it's really a doggy dog world. Doggy man, dog. That's know? that's. The, but, but I guess, but I guess why why was that more? It sounds like you're saying you learned that more at a uh, standard than at. Um, um so at Gens. Gens, I, I was younger and you know i uh it was like everything was done you know for me and oh, okay. uh so like i was i was playing a lot with the under 19s and uh i would train with the second team and then i would i would play games with the under 19 team okay so i was i, I was like 17 18 around around that time um and so it was like more um comfortable it was a be- it was a com- more comfortable environment yeah. uh, and then i went to stand at the edge and you know it was it was top club amazing club you know um really really you know top class uh club yeah um I, I learned a lot there but it just wasn't as um i guess comfortable you know like the city the the, the lifestyle there it was constantly raining you know and you know yeah you have- yeah <laughs> as as a young kid like it's it's hard to kind of um cont- like be in that be in an environment you know where you might not get selected for the weekend or right. you know you're you're kind of still still learning it's uh it, it it was it was a tougher environment for sure just all around and um you know i definitely learned a lot and, and became a, a better player um from from that Oh, but I know I notice uh, I notice a lot of what you're saying. The language you're using is not a, it's not necessarily about the technical quality of the football, but more right. about like the the environment that you were working in type of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 uh you know the 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 environment like technically and tactically is it's top class, right? High level, and yeah. The high level, and you know I I being from Canada, you don't you don't get that from a young from a young age do you have a lot of catching up to do okay so it's 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 uh it's tough you know to be kind of you know there but there's so much you still have to learn while you, while you, being in a while being in a foreign country and all the stuff the old stuff right there so in Gens, i felt like you know it, it was in first of all it was in uh there's two there's two provinces in belgium there's um Flanders and Wallonia. Flanders, they speak pretty much Dutch and then uh, English. Every, everyone speaks English in, in Flanders. Right. And then go to Wallonia, it's basically only French and a little bit of Dutch. Okay. Probably no English. So 
um, that was like a big thing as well. Mm. Just being able to understand, and you know, I, ha- I had to learn French, so I, I speak French fluently now. <laughs> nice. You speak French, Portuguese. I, I can't. Trini. Lost my... You speak some. You speak some Trini. You speak some Trini. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit. A little bit. But Portuguese, I lost. But French, for sure, I I, I picked up just because you know I had to, right? So, um, so after that, it was just it was. Uh, I, I I learned so much uh, in in those clubs and. But yeah, so I'm, I'm here today and, you know, still learning and, you know, still moving. So, so, so let, let me say one more thing. Yeah, go then, ahead, go ahead. So the other thing you said that's interesting is so like you first went across to Ghent like two or three years before, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So they, so, they, so they held a spot for you? Like, how was that yeah, still open? Think, so basically I, I went back. And um, when I was when I was seventeen, um, and basically, you know, I had to, I, I wasn't handed handed the contract first day, right? I, I still had to kind of go in and and you know prove that I was you know the same the same player that I was wow. a couple of years prior. Hmm. Eventually, I did that. I, I kind of showed them that I had potential, and and eventually signed and. Um, and yeah, it was against was it was an amazing experience, um, and uh, learned so like a lot at Ghent, especially especially defensively, because in 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 Belgium and they have a very like it's a very technical game, but also very physical and very tactical as well. Yeah, so for somebody who's, who's coming up and maybe leaving home at the tender age of fifteen, sixteen, going to a foreign land. Um, what, what was your mindset like, the mindset of your parents to take that risk, to go through all the hoops to, to get your passport and, and to do yeah. that? What yeah, was that I mean, like? My parents were, you know, fully supportive um, of me, you know, pursuing my dream. And, and they did everything they could to kind of help me along the way. And, um, you know, my mom also had to, had to learn Portuguese for me to get my passport. So we, we did that together and we, we learned it. And so it was, it was hard, you know, it was, it was definitely hard on them. You know, um, I was a young kid, so I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, the <laughs> best behaved, I guess. As, as a, uh, yeah. Growing up, starting high school and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. friends and whatever, but no, they definitely stuck around with me and, and, you know, being from such a big family, they they really helped me along, and and uh, you know, I I could I couldn't thank them thank them more because you know without them I I, I would be basically I, I would be nothing right 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 for sure of course they, they sacrifice a lot um exactly. so so at at a young age um, becoming a pro were there any players that that helped you along. In, in, in NFL and NBA, they normally have um, players who they call rookies and vets, right? So, yeah, they right, players right. Who, who, for lack of a better term, held their hand, um, uh, supported yeah, like, you in any yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was uh, definitely in, in my current club, there's um, Daryl Fordyce. You know, yeah. he played. Uh, he played for Portsmouth, and uh, he played. You know, in for Bournemouth and all these clubs. But went for to play for um, uh, some teams in Ireland. Okay. I can't remember yeah. the names right now. Uh, Linfield, Linfield. He played for, and, yeah. and he won multiple championships with with them. And he's kind of uh, you know older now. He's thirty four, but he's right. really you know helped me along in uh in my developments recent my recent developments um especially just you know being more composed and and decision making and not going going like every time i get the ball choosing my moments and stuff so he's kind of uh you know helped me along the way um recently but other than that like just certain players that I, i played with in europe like you know um my boy Doug Urdan, um he he's a, a Icelandic footballer that played with me in Ghent yeah. and also Jonathan Jonathan David we also played together 
um, in Ghent. And he, they both, you know, we were training every day. Um, and then we would do extras together and, you know, just right. really, you know, pushing each other along. And, um, you know, so I, I, I've had a lot of uh, definitely, definitely a lot of good teammates and teammates that helped me along the way. And, you know, I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm still learning. I'm still, I'm still going. I'm still, um, I'm not a complete product. I still have a lot more to offer, right. I feel. And, um, you know, uh, it's just about, you know, doing the right thing so that uh, I can reach my, my potential. Right. Sure. Um, so, so let's bring it back a little bit. On the 15, you, you made the under 15 Canadian team. I saw that. So there's like camps. That Camp, you, there's right. not really in team per se. Okay. Like it's more like identifying. Like a pool. Different. Yeah. So I went to like two of those when, when I was around 15. Um, one in Toronto and then one in Vancouver um and you know those are those are really good experiences as well um unfortunately on the second on the second camp i, I got injured but um okay. you know just being in that environment with with young young footballers from canada and um you know kind of being in that pool was uh, was was a really good thing for me as, uh, as a young footballer right right yeah. yeah for sure um high school football um how, how is it in Canada? How is it set up? So basically, there's it's not like uh, Intercall in Trinidad. Yeah. Um, it's, Hold, it's on. Not... Hold on, but which part of Canada are you from? <laughs> I'm from, uh, so I live in a city called Winnipeg, which is like cent very central, like dead center of Canada. You're, you're in the Midwest of, of Canada? <laughs> like <laughs> dead center. Dead center. <laughs> dead center. Okay, technically, okay. technically, we're like in the West, Western Conference, but we're really center. Right. Um, right. Two hours west and two hours west uh, east to get to each coast, right? So, yeah. So, so usually I was trying to I was trying to pretend I know people from wherever people are from now. So. <laughs> but I, I don't know nobody from Winnipeg. No, nah, yeah. It's, uh, there's there's a few trainees here, you know. So, nice. but um, sorry, what, what was I saying? Right, the, the high school setup. So it's it's more clubs that are you oh. know like bigger in development. So right, there's different youth clubs in the city and throughout Canada and uh, teams that um, the youth clubs that win their pro provincial um, like provincial cup yeah. um, go on to play the top teams all over Canada in right. like the nationals. Right. Um, so that's kind of, um, that's kind of like the, the, the biggest like, thing for youth soccer in Canada is, is clubs and it's not really high school um, based um, and then there's different you know national development centers so there's kind of throughout different provinces um, and in, in mine as well there's something called the the rec centers or national yeah. development centers where they kind of get the a pool of the best young players in the city and then they they train like every morning and then a bus comes, takes them to school and stuff. So um, okay. and we train all through all through the school year, and um, as well as with our clubs. So that's that's kind of how it is in Canada. And I I played with a, a club called South End and Bonnie Vital here in my city. So okay, okay. Um, all right. So 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 were there any um, pivotal um, individuals in your your life, like just before you, you became pro or make that move to to Belgium, who was the coach that that saw the talent in you and maybe give you that extra push? Definitely. Um, so I, I that that same coach that I, I mentioned before, his name is Patrick De Stefani, and he's actually on the coaching staff at my current club. Um, oh, wow. nice. So he is he was like a big big uh you know help for me he, we would like we would train um every day in the summer winter you know we'd, we'd be we'd be out winter? Yeah, yeah winter, winter in winnipeg like, indoor indoor <laughs> indoor, hey, indoor, winter, indoor man, right. winnipeg, winter, winnipeg winter is no joke man so it's like <laughs> yeah yeah well canada there's, what i've heard about it oh yeah, yeah there's so. some here in my city which is a 
known for to be a cold city. It's some days it's like minus fifty. Uh, I'm not joking. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. my, my my wife is Canadian. She's from Toronto. Oh. I've oh, been nice. to Toronto in the winter, but <laughs> I just imagine it for the West what it's gonna be like. So yeah, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Exactly. No, no, West on the on the on the West Coast, Vancouver is like it doesn't snow like what? probably probably snows like maybe a couple times in the winter and then after that it's it's just like rain and okay vancouver is like very it's very not bad good, good weather yeah um but here's cold but but anyway pa- patrick to stephanie he was he was like the biggest uh kind of uh, uh influence on on my young career he uh he you know trained trained with me every day right so and taught me a lot and gave me the confidence and, and push that I, that uh and belief that i i, I needed to, yeah. to kind of to pursue uh, football okay okay um were there any um like aspects of your game that you had to work on uh, more than others um we had a couple of guys on who, who spoke about not fitness. being um yeah fitness technical ability um were there any aspects you said you had to stay back and and work on more than others um like my my technical ability was kind of always there like i was right. always kind of a dribbler as a kid like as a, as a as a youth i was kind of a dribbler and always kind of you know doing you know moves and games and whatever but definitely just for me it was all about um my decision making Right, right and right. uh you know that's something that i only gained through experience right and i'm still working on it today but um you know i'm, I'm a runner as well so like i'm, I'm up and down the line <laughs> yeah down. fitness fitness you know it, it's kind of an issue but you know I, I have the work ethic to to just do it right you know in the <laughs> off season working every day in the off season you know going to the gym running right. running right so um so my fitness is good. I'm I'm fit. <laughs> I, I'm a wing back, so I have to be right. Yeah, be <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, would you would you would you describe the um decision making along the same lines as tactical awareness, or you, you mean something? Yeah, that, for sure. Tactical awareness definitely is is a big part of my kind of game that I needed to work on. Right. Uh, just because you know, I'm I only learned how to be a defender. You know, at eight 19 right 18, 18 and um uh, even then it was as a as, as a wing back it wasn't as a out and out right back um right so i still still could there was still kind of like room for for me to you know you know get forward but right. learning to be then like defend just straight up defending 1v1 1v2 whatever um yeah that was a big thing, you know, knowing where to be with my back line, you know, when can I, when can I go forward? When can I, when should I stay? Stuff yeah. like that. Um, and really um, something that I'm working on right now is, is defending crosses. Cause it's right, right. <laughs> uh, tough, man. It's, it's, it's really tough, especially when you have, you know, a bigger guy or yeah. it's, just, it's just that awareness of where the, the the player is that is attacking the cross, kind of like the awareness to put him off and stuff, and just just be be there uh, to 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 kind of um, interrupt his his movements, and, yeah. and so that's mm-hmm. that's one thing I'm working on right now uh, is defending crosses for sure. Um, okay. So, um, so so what formation do you guys play right now? So we are fluid. Um, okay. sometimes depending, it de- kind of depends on, on which, what team we're playing. If we feel like we need to sit a little bit deeper, like if we're going on a away trip or something and you know, we might, tra- we might be in a four five, one, okay. or we could, or we could, uh, we could, it's fluid, right? So we, that could easily become a four, three, three. Right. Uh, sometimes we have three in the back with, with five and two or f- three in the back with four and three. Um, and that that's like my favorite um, <laughs> yeah yeah play. permission to go <laughs> yeah, exactly i can i can just bomb on right right uh, sure. <laughs> but but um yeah so we kind of it's, it's a very it's very fluid and and um you know we we, we mostly work a four through three and a, and a three five two okay 
So I want to skip ahead now. Uh, how did your Trinidad and Tobago call up happen? So it's I was kind of uh, I was kind of in contact um, with uh, a couple uh, like a couple guys. Uh, Matthew Wilson. I don't know if you know Matthew Wilson. Mm -mm. Not sure. Um, no. He kind of reached out to me, and he he uh, had a relationship with uh, the former coach Terry. Right. And uh, you know he he kind of got me on their on the radar um, of of Terry, and I was initially supposed to kind of go to go to a, a camp, but then co a COVID hit. Yeah. Right. That, that was like March, so it was like when everything shut down um, mm -hmm. in twenty twenty, and. Um, so I was kind of on the radar for a little bit, but n nobody had really seen me play and stuff. So I had a, it, we had a bubble for my league uh, in 2020 and I did well. I played, played uh, quite a few games um, there. It was a shortened season. So it was only about a, about five weeks, five, six weeks, right. probably like six, seven weeks. Um, and um so I had a good showing there, and then, um, you know, uh, it was it was quick. It happened quick. Uh, right, right. So I got a call from Matthew Wilson, who had a connection with Terry Fennick, and um, he asked me, like, straight up, like, the camp was in, like, five days, I think, wow. or, like, four days, like, I maybe, because <laughs> I, I had to get a COVID test, like, right away. Yeah. So, like, dead, dead, dead of winter – in, in Canada, like literally cold as hell, yeah. and I had just got home from uh from like being out in the cold. <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, I, I I see the call and I'm like, yeah, I answer it and um he asked me, yeah, there's a there's a camp and you know, um Terry would Terry would like to have you and. Um, and um, yeah, so then after that, I, I flew a, a few, a, like a couple of days later, three, four days later, and then, um, and then yeah, so it was a, it was a very fast turnaround, and um, you know, but it was a really, really good experience, and um, you know, obviously the game didn't go well, but I, I learned a lot being in that environment, and um, and uh, you know, it was a, it was, it was a good opportunity to, to showcase my my talent and um you know um hopefully hopefully i can uh, do well in my in my with my team and uh you know get another call up yeah so, yeah um but uh, we're looking good we look we, we looked good in, in the gold cup so yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. um one thing no don't want to just bypass that um young player call up in five days yeah sure uh, can you come in five days i mean what was your mindset like heading into that? Um, were you apprehensive in any way, or did you just say, I "I'll try to do my best"? Or like, obviously, like I was, you know, I think I I was like two two or three months into the off season. Right. I hadn't played a game in like three three ish months, just just non, just under four months, I feel. Um. So it was kind of like if I go. I'm not, I'm not fit. I'm yeah. not like game fit. I'm not match. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my city and my city, there's a complete lockdown. Right. Um, like we couldn't do anything. There was no, you know, basically I, I had to train at, at my stadium, um, at my wow. team state um, and running outside and whatever, you know, in the, in the cold. Yeah. And, and um, so that was kind of like where I was at physically yeah. and I was kind of apprehensive of like do I go and potentially not show my best self yeah 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 or do I stay and kind of hope for another opportunity and at the time I was just like man like it wasn't a hard decision to make um right. you know you never know what's going to happen you yeah. know you, you know injuries and you know kind of where, where you're at and you can never I, you can never for me it's like you can never turn on your country especially when um especially when I'm from there and, you know, my family's from there, yeah. you know, watching them all throughout, you know, the world cup and seeing, and, and, you know, my love for football growing for sure. um, from my connection with that. So it was really like a no brainer for me. And uh, yeah, yeah. I said, you know what, 
I, I don't I don't really think I have a choice. Like I, I have to do this and you know. So a little bit of, you know, I was a little bit apprehensive, especially like for the fitness part yeah. aspect. You know, you went in. You was you were still fitted on the whole team. Ah hey, hey, um, don't answer that question. Um Andre, behave yourself. Ah. <laughs> Andre, behave. <laughs> you see, I was trying to say I started stick again. Andre, you know it was it was it was tough, man. Especially yeah. first training, first training I get. Um, first training, it was like two minutes in, right after the warm up. It was like eleven v eleven. I was like, <laughs> I was like, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so uh, it was it was uh, it was tough. It was tough physically for sure, um, and and not having much time to prepare with 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 the guys there. You know, it was it was always a, a tough situation. So, right. um, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just glad I got to you know show show a little bit of uh, a little bit of what I can do in in training, and um, you know, I'm I'm glad I got to meet some of the guys who who are doing well well right now. So yeah. it's always good to see, right? Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah, that's great. Um, so tell us about um how the league is going on um in Canada, how COVID affected it, um how COVID affected you in any way. How was that time period? Um, so COVID, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely been hard in Canada, yeah. especially because like we've been so strict with with the rules. You know, yeah. a lot more strict other countries like this the states and you know where where they have you know um kind of similar similar leagues like the usl right that, that have been kind of going on from um who, that covid hasn't really affected that much like it right. did us um so but other than that it was you know still still training you know it was it was definitely tough it was definitely tough you know not like i felt i felt like you know i was doing so well and then kind of covid happened and then right. like, damn like where, where where do i where do i go now you know what i mean so i'm um, definitely tough but you know i'm 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 just glad we're kind of uh hopefully starting to get over over it now and um can continue with our so regular regular lives so, so the league is open right now the league started back so we had a we had like a bubble for about five weeks All right. um and we we played eight games in that bubble okay and then right now it's it's uh it's open completely so we're we're traveling i actually travel tomorrow i got back i got back what yesterday morning like at like one in the morning and i'm leaving tomorrow um at 3 p.m. for another away trip. Okay. Um, we all headed. We're heading to Edmonton. So we, we just did okay. a three, we just did it like a two week away trip. And hmm. so that was tough. Now we're back on the road again. But everything's normal now. And, um, you know, fans, everything. Fans are slowly starting to come back. I mean, there's still like the, you have to be double vaccinated to, 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 to come into the stadium right. and stuff. So, there's still um, restrictions, but um, you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll all clear up soon and we can get back to it a hundred percent. Because different provinces are are different; like they they don't have those restrictions. But my province is uh is, is kind of just going a little bit more slowly, I guess. Right. Okay. I was gonna ask some lighter questions. Right. Go ahead. For sure. <laughs> um. So. Since you became a right back, do you have did you have a favorite right back that you like look at their video highlights and stuff like that, watch their games, anything like that? Hundred percent, uh, Danny Alves. Hundred percent, Danny Alves. <laughs> no, no mic on, no mic on for you. No, no, no. I think he might be too young for mic on, Andre. Boy, hard luck. No, no, I I know mic on, but, but okay. Danny Alves, like man, like, the guy's just and he's a beast. Right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure, so, for sure. kind of similar height to me so i kind of like always i w I always tell my teammates and like as a joke you know hey i'm, I'm trying to be like danny alves you know so, right yeah you should just talk some portuguese they might think of you <laughs> nah, uh, so, that's, a, no. that's, a, that's a good role model 
<laughs> yeah, For I sure. mean, yeah. But, he's still uh, playing. He's like 39. He just won 40. the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How old is he? 40. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's uh, he's up there. Yeah. One of the fittest but, guys I ever yeah. see on our field. Yeah, and then also Bakri Sanya was amazing. Ooh. Sanya. <laughs> Very athletic right back. Um, These Arsenal fans. These Arsenal fans. Tactically. With their, ter- with their terrible decision. <laughs> terrible choice. <laughs> nah, hey, he Andre behave now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't worry, boy. I'm um, pretty cool, boy. We need to fight together. Hopefully this year we can, we can come up above it. You seen the new about kit? About... <laughs> yeah, I see, nice. I, I, I see the new kit. Um, I'm not going to buy any kits. Um. Until we do well, uh, but Israel, yeah, I'm not going to buy any kids on, until I lose this belly. <laughs> I think I might buy that. I think I might buy that kit. It's, it's looking. Which good. one, the blue or the or the red? The, th- the third kit. The third the one. Third kit, right there. That's yeah. a, it's a nice one. Yeah. I look the other way. Which uh, which player? Which player <laughs> gonna be on the? What player gonna be on the jersey? Uh, Who's your favorite current player? Yeah. Current player, definitely uh, Saka. Saka, nice. Oh yeah, yeah. For He's sure. a good player. <laughs> Forget that one. Forget that one. Yeah. Last man, he's so good. He's just, yeah. he's just smooth, man. He's just such a good player and so young too, man. It's crazy. Well, it, it's real sad that we had to lean on nineteen year old <laughs> when, when they have all the other guys. It, it, it's, it's hard. Let, let's not go down that road. Let's, uh, Andrew. I don't say like that question, boy. Yeah, hey, that's a light question. Oh boy, it's but, not light, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so then, but, so then, all right, go ahead. Funny story, uh, Sambi Lokonga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this man, like I, I uh, he, he was at uh, he was at Anulex, uh, Oh wow. When I, when I was at Ghent, I think. Okay. Wow. Uh, so he, I think I, I'm, hundred percent. I'm like ninety nine percent certain I I played him like in an under nineteen game. Right. Uh, yeah. But. That was that. So it's kind of it's kind of cool seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, That's that's pretty cool for sure. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, he's the next question. The next question is going to be about uh, Alfonso Davies. Alfonzi. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I've I've never actually played with him, so so you know he's uh he's obviously you know he's (laughs) a beast. (laughs) Beast man, he's like. Um, you know, but he's he, he's an amazing player and, um, you know, like the top of uh, Canadian talent along with Jonathan David, who's who's, who's a friend of mine. So Right, right. So, who, just, um, who, just, who just won the uh, league uh, with Leo. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he's on yeah, that yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. impressive. Um, Alf- Alfonso Davies as well. So when I saw him come on the scene, I, I was blown away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he, he was like I have a, I have a couple of players on my team that played with him in Whitecaps, right, in, right, in the Whitecaps, and um, they say like just like when he gets into open space, man, it's like really <laughs> different, yeah, different. He had a game against Chelsea, um, that summed it up. He just they couldn't stop him. <laughs> exactly, yeah, I remember, I remember that game, Barca yeah. too. Oh yeah. yes. Oh. Um do you, yeah, Arsenal fan. Do you, do you like Messi? Um I'm a I'm a Cristiano Ronaldo fan. <laughs> like growing up, growing up. Oh, I remember you guys um from the same island, basically. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but like I was like obviously it it was hard to see him play for Man U, but like he was just amazing. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Seeing him in like 2008 and, and and really like it was it was so so many arguments you know I I have so many memories <laughs> of like being in Jamboree Park and arguing with all the guys <laughs> there all, all like the neighborhood kids like who's better Thierry Henry or Cristiano Ronaldo yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so but Cristiano Ronaldo is man amazing amazing professional and obviously I'm I'm not I'm not one of those guys who's like oh like. I can't like Messi. Like Messi, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Messi's unbelievable, right? Messi, Messi is is the goat as well. Ooh. Yeah. They're, they're goat. Ronaldo <laughs> is the goat. Messi is the goat. Ah, <laughs> uh, you don't find many no. Cristiano Ronaldo fans saying that, no, but that's nah, cool. nah, man. Come on, man. You know, <laughs> you know, Kobe, Kobe, yeah. uh, Kobe said there's there's a goat island. 
right, yeah. right, 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 right. That <laughs> makes there, sense. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, you're, then you're a goat, you know? Yeah, so yeah. So they're multiple, and, and both of them have been doing it for so long, man. It's crazy. For sure, man. for sure. All right, Messi. I I'm so excited to see him in PSG because I'm, I'm I like PSG too, man. They're so, right. That's a team with with swag, man. They got swag. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's going to be interested in uh interesting in Europe, but France. I I don't want to see that that bloodbath, man. That's I don't want to see what. I don't want to see any bloodbath in France. I don't want to oh. see that. Messi's going to score like like a hundred goals, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm expecting. Fifty goals, twenty five assists. Nah, nah, he, he's gonna get more assists, I feel. <laughs> he's gonna get more assists. It's good. I don't. Oh, it'll be very I interesting if they do win it, though. Yeah, I just hope he doesn't get you know beat up because in in, in France, like there, it's a tough. They're rough. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. Andrew rough. was saying that too. <laughs> As, so like li- literally, 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 like the second thing I texted these these guys in the group was just like. <laughs> I hope he's ready for more. Like it's gonna be tackles like Copa America. Like and usually in Copa America, he gets treated very differently than La yeah. Liga, right? Yeah. So it's gonna yeah. be the same. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, it's, I'm excited to see it. I'm really excited to see it. I don't know how PSG pulled that off, man. Like <laughs> this <laughs> transfer. Why it, Naldo, Don it, Uma. Oh wow. my god. All well, the, the only guy they, they paid for was Ronaldo. That's the only guy no, they paid for. Alden was on a free, on a free. I think. He was on a he free, was free as, well. as well. Who did they pay for? They paid for one person. Ashraf. Um, Ashraf. Yeah. Ha- Hakimi. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right, right, right. He's the one they so paid that, for. That's crazy, man. <laughs> I forgot to mention Hakimi is like yeah, one of your favorite players. Like, he's like, <laughs> very that's who you want to be. <laughs> Yeah, he's like crazy, man. He's unbelievable. Like, Hakimi, attacking, right, but... not many people watch the Italian league. So yeah, like, right. surprisingly, but he's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Andre yeah, used to watch it. I used to. <laughs> I, I have I have the zone, so I, I usually just put put whatever's on. So. Right, yeah. right, right, right. All right, nice. Um. So so back to FPL a little bit. So you say you you you, you don't partake, so you're just gonna be supporting Arsenal heavy. Just taking the Arsenal game. Yeah, I mean I mean I I watch I watch I watch Arsenal every week, man. So yeah. no matter no matter the game, you know, sometimes I'm like, I'm not watching, I'm not watching. <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then I end up watching. Huh? Yeah, I know that feeling. I'll 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 always be an Arsenal fan, you know. Sometimes yeah. it's hard, but <laughs> I'll Stop supporting ever. Oh, bro! Do you watch preseason me. games and stuff like that too? Yeah, yeah. I watched. Uh, I watched a bit of the preseason. You know, sometimes we we had games or training when when they were playing. But um, yeah, I watched a couple. You know, I I, I like I like Lokonga. He's looking good. Um, yeah, I like um, him. I, actually, um, what's his name? Um, the the striker, the young striker. Um, and Katia, and Katia has been looking good on the wing. He has been, but yeah. I, I, oh, oh lord, we'll, we'll see when the season starts. <laughs> Ooh, Arsenal. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I wish they didn't let Willock go. Oh yeah, they sold him. Yeah, like he's he's good, man. Should have kept him. Should have kept him. Ooh. I don't, I, I don't think he's Arsenal level, but yeah. He's a decent talent, but I mean, oh. but you talk about play, players that kind of you know would would play for the club and the and the badge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we have a lot of guys that are just you know, Aubameyang. Ooh. To me, he's me he's just picking up his check every every two Ooh. weeks, every week. You know, <sighs> but, yeah. I don't know. The guy literally changed from the time his his check went up. This guy just. No production. A different player. <laughs> no, like, yeah. uh, but it, but um, on a whole, it, um, Ateta hasn't been getting a lot of offensive production from the whole team, so I don't know if, if that's a reason why. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see Pepe this season because a lot of yeah. guys saying that he was looking good at the end of last season. Wow, wow. He's, I, I, he was, I'm not convinced. I'm. I think. I think. <laughs> You know, man, you have to have you have to have hope, man. 
I, I, I have zero faith. I, I think we should move on to a, a, a lighter subject. So, so this is not light? No, this is not light for me. <laughs> Too close um, to the heart? You might be talking about um, your, your current season, Puerto Rico, Canadian oh, Premier yeah, League. Sure. Sure, yeah. um right so so you see i see you guys in third um doing well um how's the season been going thus far in your development um learn anything um yeah man um i've had to play out of position the whole season so that's been like a big big oh, come, curve. injury yes okay and uh and i've been i've been playing left back so okay it's it's not like I can do the job as a left back, yeah, you know, but it's it's not natural. Like, um, right. it just it, you know, like just receiving the ball from the center back on the move with my left foot, okay. and like, yeah. you know, just it's just it, it like I can do it, and yeah, I've yeah, done yeah. well. I've done well, but it's not like my natural position. Yeah. So that's been like a big learning curve, and I've I've learned quite a bit. Just even even defensively, like one v one. You know, my tendency is my right foot, and I want to tackle with my right foot. Right. Lead him onto my right foot. Yeah. So it's like sometimes, like it's it's. But then you lead it, then you would be leading him inside. Inside. Yeah. Left foot. yeah, exactly. So right. I, I want to lead down the line. So it's yeah. been kind of like uncomfortable dealing with that. I've I've done well to be fair, but it's just it's it's definitely a lot of learning, and my de- my left foot's improved dramatically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> As a result, yeah. Like some trainings, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm only using my left foot in training. Like, yeah. And, you know, I mean, kind of... that that's good. Um, I I heard Beckenbauer once say, Philip Lang has been playing right back for 15 years. I never learned to use his, so I guess he's doing better than. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> like I uh... today in training, today in training, I, I played as a as a right back. Like right. it felt just like wow it went again <laughs> or it felt like, easier I was, like, I was like i was like yo i was like wow i i can actually like take the ball down the line <laughs> right 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 that, instead yeah. of wanting to cut in and and you right. know so. so has it has it been limiting you when um you guys play more attacking um to go forward are you um, um tentative I, I in going forward like in the beginning of the season for sure but as i got more comfortable and played more games there um I definitely got forward more and, you know, try, tried to go forward more. Right. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, I haven't, um, I haven't registered any goals this season or assists. Okay. It's, it's been a lot of uh, d- defensive work. Right. And, <laughs> and, you know, just getting the job done. You know, we started really well and we're having a bit of a rough patch right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I- yeah, um, but young. I'm 22. Yeah. The guy to my the guy to my right is 20. The, the other center back is 21. You know. So right, right. Really young. Young back line, and um, yeah, we lost one of our best, like our captain. Uh, he he done his ACL. Ooh, um, wow. I don't know. He you know Andrew Jean Baptiste. He plays for Haiti. Yeah. 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 yeah he scored against us, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's 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 our captain, and, and unfortunately. Oh. Kind of oh, lost wow, okay so hmm. it's been a big loss but you know we're 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 learning and we're we're, we're um you know getting better getting better yeah. every day so um in the let's talk about the the rough part if you don't mind um the mindset or, or the learnings coming through that you say you guys start to do well went through a patch um how do you guys stick together um were there anyone who who stood out to say um Let's stick together. Let's um, not hang our heads. Um, how, how was that part? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's it's kind of like a collective, right? Yeah. Um, we have we have a very good team bond, um, and you know, we're uh, it's 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 about every everyone, right? You know, everyone on the team is a leader, and it's um, obviously it's a lot it's a lot easier to stay together when you're winning, but you know, yeah, when you have sure. a couple losses here. And you know it's you have a tough you have a tough away trips and yeah it's it's hard to get together right but you know it it just comes from you know keeping positive and and under like accepting the fact that uh, you know things aren't going our way but um, you know still taking the positives from it and you know and and, and learning and um, you know using that to 
to kind of you know get get us out of uh, the the rough the rough patch, right? So um, yeah. yeah, we uh, we a lot, a lot of work to do, a lot of games to play, and you know we're still we're still in a good position in the league. So, how many, um, how many top, more top games you guys have? Uh, okay. We we play twenty eight league games total. Okay, and then about, about four games in the cup. Okay. Um, depending on if we go to the next rounds. Um, so we still have about, I want to say like 18. Yeah, about se- 17 games left. Yeah, yeah, 17. That sounds yeah. right. Season's young, man. I hope you guys do well. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. It's, uh, I don't know if there's a Canadian Premier League fantasy league, but... <laughs> <laughs> Buying it for sure. We had to buy you. <laughs> Ah, so who do you guys play next? Edmonton, you said. Edmonton, yeah, we play Edmonton in two okay. days. And, uh, okay, you is that like your biggest rival? Is that your biggest rival in the league? No, uh, I feel like we, we don't really have anyone close to us. Right. Yeah. We don't have another like we're not. There's no. There's no derbies. Like we don't. We have one one club in in my province. Right. City, right? So it's. You know, everyone is a rival to us. You know, it's we have the mentality of kind of like it's us against the world. And, <laughs> you know, it's it's us against the whole league. So that's yeah. that's how we kind of approach it. So I feel like every 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 team is a rival, and um, you know, I I, I uh, if there's one team that um, you know I always look forward to play against is uh, Forge. Right. Why? Or FC. Yeah, I mean they they they've they've kind of been the the last two years they were the champions okay. so nice it's always it, i always look forward to playing them and you know to be the best you gotta be the best um <laughs> um so what i'm seeing here you guys have one of the best defensive um records well the best along with forge um nine goals conceded you play at the back young defense um you guys are doing pretty well um um, yeah, who, who, who's taking the leadership role in the in the back line? Um, one of the centre backs, the keeper. Who? Um. So I mean, obviously, uh, when we when when Andrew when when John Baptiste got injured, yeah. he uh, that was you know that he was like our like our leader leader yeah, back yeah. captain right. So definitely a big blow. But right now, it's just about learning to to lead as a collective in the back mm. line, right. and uh, you know, not uh, you know just being there for each other, supporting each other, getting across, you know, working for your working for your teammates, and you know, it's it's definitely collected. I wouldn't say um, there's been a single you know kind of you know person that's taken that leadership role from from John Baptiste, but. Right, yeah. It's been more of a collective and, and understanding that you know we have to do this together, right? So yeah. So I, I have a couple. There's two more questions, really. So what's something that you experienced now as a professional that you didn't know was part of being a professional in football? Like, what's what's like the one thing that's been like you never would have thought it was like that? Um, you know, definitely the. Just the just the tough environments, you know. The um, definitely just being in in in, in uh, you know very competitive environment where you know you want to perform, you have to perform every day, and you you have to, or else you know you're you're not going to be in a starting eleven stuff like right. that. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, definitely like it's 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 tough, man. It's you know competing every day and and having to be on your toes and you know having to be at a certain standard every day. You know, you really can't relax. Um, and so, you know, when they when when it's youth football, you know, it's you're just, you're having fun, you know, with your friends, and you you know, you're 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 really there's no there's no pressure, there's no you know, um, there's no not really any like competitiveness, really like in youth soccer with that uh, there is with uh, professional football. Mm. Um, so, you know, just learning, learning to, learning to, uh, deal with that and, you know, always keep your, your standards high, you know, doing everything you can off the field so that you can perform whether like sleep, water and, um, sleep, water and nutrition. That's, 
like the most important things and making sure you're yeah it's it's the basics it's boring you know but it's 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 what you have to do right yeah so sure. making sure you're on top on top of all those little details and and uh you know definitely just the little details that 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 can help you in in the the smallest ways um in the game but those still small things can build up right and yeah. um yeah. That's that's kind of uh, the the biggest thing that um, you know that I I really you know ta- talent is is I mean there's amazing talents out there but you you can be talented and um, you know it can be easy but sometimes like you're talented but you have to put in that extra you know kind of um, work. Um, sure. whether that's on, on or off the field. So, yeah. Okay. For sure, for sure. And then, and then what's, uh, what's some, so it sounds like you're a real, like you're a real football fan. So like we talked about this in another episode where some professional footballers don't really seem to like football so much. They just get at right. it or something. Um, what's annoying for you? What is actually very annoying for you as a fan? Things that fans say, <laughs> they, just really, oh, they, just, they don't really get it at all. They don't get it. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say. Any, I don't want to. Say <laughs> uh, I'm just, um, one. just, just, you know, realizing that, like, they don't, they don't see the game the same way. I feel right. Uh, I, I'm, you know, we're on the field and we're seeing it from a completely different perspective, right? And we're th- we're seeing things happen, like, you know. <laughs> So, for example, there is there is very rarely a time where there is just one player that makes a mistake, mm. like like a, like a serious mistake. You know what I mean? It's most most of the time, like ninety nine percent of the time, it's just a like kind of like little mistakes that led to something, right? right? And it's like from the the fans' perspective, they can they can see just the the single mis like the last mistake, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, it's usually like a series of events that happen, and it's like, okay, we could have cut it out there. Or we're we're seeing that on we're seeing that on the field. We're seeing it happen. We we go over it in, in the videos and whatever, and um, you know, it's just it's just uh you know we see it from a different perspective. I mean, I, I it's it's always interesting to hear what what you know fans <laughs> have to say and yeah. you know, what what they're saying on twitter about, he's garbage you know, yeah but, <laughs> immediately uh, it's 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 always kind of it's, it's it's kind of funny to me because we have like such a different perspective and um you know so i mean uh, there's all there's a lot of negativity i mean our fans, <laughs> our sure. fans are amazing our fans right, are amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like yeah. <laughs> we have like amazing fans like seriously uh, yeah um, <laughs> And uh, but you know, for example, like if like a like an away fan or something, you know, seeing their perspective is, is kind of funny, and and um, you know, but we we learn to deal with it, and you know, I, I don't let it I don't let it bother me too much, um, because you know, that's at a the good end attitude. Of the day, I'm I'm the one on the field, and I, I I see what's happening, and you know, yeah, you gotta be mentally strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know fans could be ridiculous. <laughs> Fans can be. Yeah. We were talking about this last episode. Arsenal, <laughs> fan, Arsenal yeah. fans can be very I mean, ridiculous. Yes. I had, yes. I had uh, fans last last week yelling, "Oh, like, oh, like, I make, I make, uh, I make double what you make." <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow! I mean, uh, you had to go that far. <laughs> there's, some there's there's some very good banter. Like, yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was away. I was we were away at Edmonton actually, and and a fan yelled out like to me. He was like, "Pena, your sh- your shoelace is untied." Like, <laughs> I just looked down, and the whole, like, the whole section was like laughing. <laughs> you fell for the old shoelace untied one. Bro. Yeah, you got me with that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Andre, it's not only for yeah. Arsenal fans that um toxic. Yeah. Um, I understand. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but well, yeah, um, you have to be mentally strong as a and an athlete, especially with fans involved, because boy, um, they say a lot of crazy things. We were talking about the um the spectrum spectrum of 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 mental illness that they might 
beyond that to do some of the crazier things, man. That was a part of our um, <laughs> well, I mean, I, last I, I, I just, I just, you know, I, I don't take it that seriously, you know, when, right. That's when uh, fans, fans are, you know, <laughs> you know, having like just you know chirping and uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get under under our skin, but it's sometimes it's it's, it's funny and you know I'll just laugh. And, yeah. So, well, um, as we come to a close, um, as a as a young player yourself, um, what would you tell a a player that has an opportunity at short notice? Um, yeah. like it did, um, or one that is playing out a position, but you're, you're being, you're doing it for the sake of your team, so you're showing selflessness. Yeah. Um, what would, you, right. what would you tell a young player coming up who, who sees those things and maybe down or sulking about it? What, what would you tell them? I mean, you know, just, just, um, do everything you can off the field so that you can perform better on it. Right. And you have to really have a, a really good work ethic. You have to work hard, man. Yeah. Um, you know, um, just, just focusing on, on the little details. Um, and, you know, always preparing yourself to be ready because like, you know, at any moment, an opportunity, sure. to come, <laughs> any moment, you know, and uh, you have to be ready for those and, you know, just staying ready and do, doing the things that you, doing everything you can to help you on the field as well as, and when you're on the field, 100%, just do, you know, what I always go back to is, is kind of like just what I always tell myself is, is do the simple things well. Right. And uh, I always go back to that saying and that's like, kind of I say I, I tell myself that every time like if I if I you know lose the ball or maybe miss miss a pass or something you know I'm always like okay hey, do the simple things well do the simple things well and um right. you know, eventually you know that that will lead into you um being able to do being able to express yourself you know better um and but yeah I mean just just stay ready do all the right things you, you, you can do, you know, diet, food, um, mm -hmm. you know, hydration, sleep, you know, yeah. and uh, just, just staying ready and, and, you know, really believing that, uh, that you can, you can do it. Nice. Um, okay. One final, um, do you think you're going to stay uh, <laughs> fit in, in the, off, fit in the off season, just in case you get a five day call? <laughs> <laughs> to be ready <laughs> hey i'll uh i'll i'll 100 uh be be more fit you know <laughs> yeah, hope, hopefully COVID, covid is not a thing by by the next off season so. we, we want we could all yeah. hope for that bro. Yeah, um, exactly frederico bro um we want to thank you when we try to pack that podcast. Hey, I have, I have one last, I have oh. one last, one last, one last. <laughs> I, last. Right, right, I yeah. thought you say you had last. Oh, it's overtime now, huh? <laughs> two last, two, two quick last, two quick last, two quick last. Yeah, you had so, two minutes, eh? Go ahead. Do you, do you still play, do you still play video games though? So like you said, you used to play Winning Eleven? Oh, oh I play, uh, Revolution. I, I play, I play COD. I play, I play Warzone. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, okay. Uh, like, like, Every day, basically, like on away trips, like I have right. to carry my, like my PlayStation, and you know, it's, yeah, yeah. I have to, you know, but no, it's fun. It's that's 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 my all my brothers play it, right? So play yeah. with them. And, that's and a nice then, the other, then the other question is, um, do you see yourself as a coach in the future? Uh, I actually have a, I actually have like a little little academy where I okay. where I teach. You know, I, I just go like mostly like technical skills and kind of trying to guide guide them a little bit based off of my experiences. You know, I'm I'm still young, so yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm uh, you know Jose Mourinho or something. <laughs> oh boy, I was I was wondering but, you know, which name you're gonna call. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just just trying to give my my two cents. You know, because I was yeah. I was in their position. You know, in my city, and I feel like if I had heard a lot of the things that that i've learned now um you know i would have been better equipped um mm. 
mm-hmm. for, for the for the you know professional game and and, and the the high levels um, that I've been at right so you know I uh it's a, it's a small academy you know we have 12 kids so that's awesome that's that's yes, cool sir. bro yes sir any more entry yeah no, that's it <laughs> all right um Federico um again bro thanks again for coming on um I'm I'm gonna tri- I always like to triple and quadruple thank everybody who come on because you can be doing anything else like you say you're doing something else and you know you still come on and um, we had a great time great story I, I'm sure people will be educated and inspired by it one thing you're trying to build a network so I definitely gonna be bothered when Arsenal playing I'm gonna be like <laughs> boy you see that madness or you see that just go anyway um but for yeah, sure bro, man. We keep in contact and thanks again for coming on and sharing your story with us. Fire, 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 fire.